Hey everybody, this is Everyman Prepping, and I am Seth, and thank you so much for coming by today. If you're new, thanks for joining us. If you're a long-time listener, thank you for coming by as usual. What we're going to talk about today, we're not going to get into Israel and Hezbollah, Russia, China, and all that. We're going to stay a little bit domestic. We're going to talk about the hurricane that's coming in, in towards Florida through the Gulf. What effect is it have over there? Most importantly, though, what effect is it going to have on the harvest time? It's harvest season right now. So we're going to talk about not only is harvest season for you and me, but it's harvest time for the big industrial farms. They're bringing in the you know, soybean, the corn, the, the other grains, whatever. Uh, and, you know, there's a giant hurricane coming through there with a lot of water, a lot of wind. So what can happen with that? What's that going to cause? We're going to look at also so the support worker strike that's coming up and how that can affect inflation as well, as well as some commodities. And that's the first thing I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And here we're going to see a chart on silver. Silver and gold are skyrocketing today. They're not, okay, that's a little carried away. They're not skyrocketing, but they're having a great day, uh, silver and gold both. In fact, they're having a great year so far. I think gold's up about 30%. But as you can see from the chart, and I know it's a little hard to show you, see, so I'll, I'll um, point out some stuff. But silver here is at $32 and was it eight cents or so. And uh, it's up, uh, was it 4.63% 4, 4 today, $1.42 in total, uh, almost $2 a day. It's almost unheard of. As you can see, it's almost closing at an all-time high within the last year. And definitely within, let me switch it to the last five years. You can see how, you know, this is the uh, COVID time here. And how it, you know, sank, then came back up, flatlined for a lot. Now it's hitting uh, new highs for over five years. You know, it's, it's doing great things. And then we'll look at gold here. Gold's been on a tear. I mean, it's up 30% over the year. Look at this climb it's had. It's at an all-time high. The all-time high for silver is $50. So still about $18 or so away from that. Uh, but gold, another all-time high, two, you know, 2,656, up another percent today. It's taken off. So if you own those two metals, you know, good for you. Is it too late to get in? I don't know. Not a financial advisor. I just know it's uh, always been money. It's God's money. Always will be money, and it's it's doing recovery now. Why is it going up? You know, why is it is doing it so well, well right now? Well, it's a reflection on the fact that well, the dollar's dying. The economy sucks. The world economy is in trouble. Uh, banks are running to metal because paper's not worth anything. So that's why it's going up, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you can hear other stuff in other places, but precious metals doing great. If you have some, you know, great for you. If you didn't, hey, turn those greenbacks, those dollar bills into other assets. Uh, it could be food, water, brass, lead, housing, whatever. Many other things you can put it into. So uh, don't feel like you missed the boat and it's over. You can definitely do other stuff with your money before it becomes worth less, and then finally, worthless. Because, like I've been saying, that, that is definitely going to happen. And to prove that out about the inflation, I always tell you about, not the inflation, about um, the uh, the recession coming. Let, let me scroll down here to the 10-year and 2-year. Uh, the 10-year is at 3.7. The 2-year is at 3.5. So it's about a 0.2 positive. We've been negative, like I've told you before, since January 2002. Recessions always come once you turn back positive. We are, we're holding steady on that positive, so recession still inbound. But let's talk about this hurricane here. So what do we have? We have hurricane. It's a tropical storm right now. Helen, Heleni, Heleni, whatever, Helen, I'll call it. Um, anyway, tropical storm. It's going to turn into a hurricane Wednesday night. Major hurricane, landfall, 8 p.m. or so on Thursday uh, in Florida. You can see on the map, we'll zoom in a little bit, and you can see closer where it's going to hit. Category two or three, maybe four. It depends how much it builds up here in the hot water uh, of the Gulf. But major hurricane coming. Uh, yes, if you live in the area, let's zoom in here a little bit. If you live in this purple zone, you're going to get 12-foot storm surge. That's where they think it's going to you know, hit mostly uh, in, in Florida. So, you know, there's I got other videos out there. A lot of other people do also what to do for about flooding, hurricanes, protect your house, protect your assets, your food. You don't want to get it waterlogged. You don't want to, you know, water ruins everything including your stored food and your prepping items. So make sure you're taking care of all that. Additionally, we'll go back to here. If you're on this track here of the storm, you know, it's going to go through Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, go in the Midwest, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. It's like I said, it's harvest time. Very important. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit in a, in a minute. But you got to harvest your stuff. If you're in this area, clean out your gardens, harvest everything that's got left. You spend a lot of time, energy, money, sweat, tears, all that. Don't let the storm blow it away, flood it, 
again, water damage, take it indoors, harvest it even if you have to do it early. That way you can preserve it. You can start now canning, freeze drying, dehydrating, smoking, whatever you got to do, do something. Uh, don't let all that hard work go to waste. And in fact, let's look at this GFS model because let me back it up here. So there, you know, here's the East Coast, Gulf Coast, East Coast. Here it is down here forming. And what this is the GFS model that's going to predict it. You can see where, how much rain is going to be. The green's about two and a half, three, four inches. You start getting yellow, it's around four. You start getting the reds, you're looking at six, 10, 12 inches of rain. Like I said, rain gets in the fields, tractors can't go in, too muddy, can't harvest. Farmers can't harvest. Food inflation goes up, prices go up, crops rot, bad stuff, right? So I know they're working 24 hours a day right now trying to harvest it all, but this could have a serious impact uh, coming up. So we've got to be careful about that. So as you can see, as the storm goes, we have landfall Thursday, and then it goes in. And really, the heavy rainfall, South Carolina, North Carolina, and then you get off over here, Tennessee, Kentucky, and this area uh, during the next day here. We're at Friday, and then as we go through Friday, you can see where it goes. And we're even getting over here in the Midwest now, Iowa, Indiana, some Ohio over here. You know, it's starting to get uh, a lot of water. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of harvesting going on there. And then as we go further into Saturday, it starts dissipating, but it does travel up. Let me go back one. It starts traveling up north, a lot of rain. Fields could get muddy. Like I said, if you are individual, take care of yourself. If you're in this area, harvest what you can. Just be able to watch out. That's why I want to do the main point of this video is something big's coming through the Midwest, the East Coast, uh, taking all the food you can, buy extra food now. If this you know hits our harvest hard, you're gonna see it in the prices. And you know, the farmers will will have to recoup their expenses. And if it goes up here into the soybean land. You know, Wisconsin, Michigan, all up here in North Dakota. I don't think it's going to go that far if we keep going. It doesn't look like it really affects up there. So it clears out. Stays on the East Coast, though. A lot of water over here. They're going to be pretty good up there in soybean because, you know, soybeans are in everything. Soy lecithin, soy emulsifiers, whatever. Soy is used in everything. Uh, they're having a good harvest right now. Hopefully that continues uh, and this won't affect it. But hurricanes coming. Get ready. Now, something else that's kind of uh, interesting is Ukraine's having a hard time right now, not only because there's a war, but they can't get the winter crops in. They haven't had rain in many weeks, and the upper uh, layer of the soil is so dry, they can't plant. It's the breadbasket of Europe. It kind of is the Europe's gauge. A lot of other parts of Europe are flooded right now. You know, Spain, Italy, you got, uh, United Kingdom, they're all flooded. So we either got flood or no water. A lot of planting issues for winter crops over there and harvesting. And so Europe's having big trouble. So there's going to be a lot of food, scarcity, food pressure in Europe. So just keep advised of that also because that will impact our prices here. If they got to import more from other countries, that's going to take it from where the U.S. can import. And, you know, supply demand, that whole thing. And lastly, let's look at one more agricultural thing. Yes, bird flu is still, still around, still a thing, still in the back pocket of them. You know, in case they need to pull it out and say, you know, we've got to kill all the cows, don't drink the milk, you know. We need to inflate those number, inflate those prices as well. But it says here that bird flu was confirmed in 24 additional dairy herds in California last week. Uh, so that's not 24 cows. That's 24 herds. So that's a lot of cows, right? It says the state has the second highest number of infected herds, up to 34. Uh, all the new cases were discovered on August 30th or later. So 34 herds, that's a lot. But Colorado leads the nation. 64 of the 232 outbreaks you know, if herds in the country are in Colorado. So, yep, bird flu is still a thing, still affecting cows for some reason. And I think that's kind of sitting in the back pocket of the powers that be in case they need to use it. So keep your eye on this as well. Lastly, let's talk about the port crisis. So the Port of New York, New Jersey details strike operation plans. So basically, there's a union work stoppage coming. October 1st, their contract ends. And, the, you know, the port workers that unload the ships, the containers here you see, Put them on trailers. They're going to strike. They want more money. You know, what all strikes are, are, are about, you know, money, benefits, whatever. So as it says here, the International Longshoremen's Association represents about 25,000 members in the container of rolling on, rolling off services. And their contract ends October 1st and it'll affect ports from Maine to Texas. They, you know, there's $92 billion worth of freight each year that goes through there. So why is this important? Well, we get a lot of automotive parts through there. We get a lot of agricultural, both from Europe and South America come through there. You get a lot of petroleum, oil, 
you know, uh, gas, uh, lubricants, everything. That, those things come through the East Coast ports. Lots of stuff come through those ports that you're going to want and need. Anything from Africa, the Middle East, all that stuff. So if you, what, if you buy stuff, you live on the East Coast where a lot of your stuff comes from, you might want to stock up now because this, you know, if the port closed down, there's no intervention by the administration right now to force them to mediate, force them to work. You know, you're going to run some shortage of supplies. So why well, don't stock up now? You got to October 1st. You got a warning now. Will Biden and the administration force them to work? I don't know. It's all going to be political, right? The election's coming up. What favors Kamala? Is it to let them strike so then they can come in and be the hero and, you know, come out with a deal and say they, they, they you know, that Kamala came in and uh, solved the strike, the union and the, the owners come to agreement and everything's good and the workers got paid a ton of money. That could be what they're shooting for. They don't care about the suffrage in the meantime. They want to play the hero. Um, they could also try to preempt that and say, we're going to force them to work now so we don't have all this. I think the bigger effect will be let people suffer, let them have pain, and then come in and be the hero. So look at that. That's what I predict will happen. Who knows? So that's all I have for you today. I'd love to hear your comments below, especially if you live in the uh, Gulf Coast around the Florida region and you've got local, uh, you can update us locally what they are, they're telling you about, you know, storm surge, where it's headed, time frames, what you're doing, tips of what you've done before uh, to prepare your house or your preps to keep everything dry out of the way. Put it down below. And if you know anybody that's a port worker on the East Coast, put it down below also. Put them what they're thinking is. Are they really going to strike? Are they going to hold strong? Uh, what are they hearing? It'll be great to have some boots on the ground reports. We can sh I'll share it and I can talk about it later if we need to. But that's what I have. Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully this week is going through pretty well for you. And I'll be back in the next video. We'll update you on World War III and see if we're going to see a nice glowy mushroom soon. So until then, keep your ear to the ground and head on a swivel. Mm -hmm.